At some point in its life, this Remington 870 Express Synthetic had its stock carelessly installed. The stock bolt was forcibly screwed all the way in while cross-threaded, which damaged the threads on the stock bolt, as well as the threads receiving it. Now on some guns, the stock bolt screws directly into a tapped hole in the receiver, presenting an obvious problem if those threads become damaged beyond repair. The design of the 870 wins engineering points for using a separate part to accept the stock bolt called the receiver stud. If its threads become irreparably damaged or worn out over time, the problem can be rectified by replacing a $3 fastener instead of a $250 receiver assembly. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to replace this part and also show how to repair the stud's internal threads if they are not so extensively damaged. The first step is to strip the receiver. Next, remove the recoil pad. Then unscrew the damaged stock bolt and remove the stock. Detailed step-by-step -step instructions for this can be found in your owner's manual. With the stock bolt out, you can see the damage. Forcing the bolt all the way in while cross-threaded has rolled and reshaped the threads over the full length that engages the stud. For comparison, this stock bolt is the same part, but with intact threads. The threads in the original receiver stud have matching damage, which is why the original stock bolt can still be screwed in and will hold the stock on securely enough for normal use. However, other stocks or grips that require different bolts cannot be installed on the shotgun using the stud since it effectively has a different thread now. New replacement studs can be ordered directly from Remington's customer service department. Instructions for contacting them are in your owner's manual. The stud I'll be installing on this gun is a used part that has some damage of its own, caused when someone attempted to install this pistol grip. The grip's mounting bolt was damaged, and since the bolt is made of a harder alloy than the stud, the stud's threads were torn up when the user tried to force the bolt in. Unlike the damaged stud being replaced, however, only the first few turns of this stud's threads were mangled. Remington scores more engineering points here by using a common quarter 28 thread pitch for their stock bolts, instead of some rare proprietary thread like many other firearms. Because of this, the damaged mounting bolt can be replaced with an identical fastener from any decently stocked local supplier, instead of playing phone tag with the aftermarket pistol grips manufacturer and waiting for an expensive specialty part to arrive in the mail. I can also use a standard tap to clean up the damaged thread in the stud and make it serviceable again. The first step in repairing this stud is to remove any loose pieces of metal lodged into the threads. For this, I just used a basic cleaning pick. For proper tapping, the lug should be clamped vertically. This will help keep the tap lined up precisely with the axis of the hole. Sticking a rag under the stud will catch any cutting fluid that drips through if you like to be proactive about keeping a clean workspace. Whenever you're using a tap to cut threads, it's important to use some type of lubricant. There are a lot of different products you can use. The key is to use something to prevent damage to the tool or the threads you're trying to repair. The objective here is to use a tap to re-thread the stud's damaged section, clearing any metal that will interfere with the stock bolt's threads and meeting up with the intact threads below. It's very important to line the tap up properly before starting, matching it as closely as possible with what is left of the original thread. If the new threads don't match up with the undamaged section on the other side, the part will just get messed up further. When the tap feels like it's binding or catching while cutting, backing it off a little will break it free and the tapping can continue. If the stud is in reparable condition and the tap was lined up correctly at the beginning, it shouldn't take too long to cut through the damaged section and into the good thread. At this point, the tap will spin relatively freely and will screw the rest of the way down with little resistance. If the tap continues to cut as it gets deeper, it should be carefully backed out and the stud re-examined. This likely indicates that the tap was not lined up properly to begin with and is now cutting up the good thread, or that the damaged section of the thread is larger than initially thought. In either case, the stud is probably too damaged to be repaired properly, and a new part should just be ordered. After backing the tap out and blowing out any metal chips left inside, 
The repair job can be checked by gently screwing a stock bolt into the stud. It should thread in easily, and while it may feel a little loose in the repaired threads, it should be held securely by the undamaged threads once it's all the way in. To remove the old stud, clamp the receiver in a vise using some scrap wood to protect the finish. This is just to hold the receiver in place. Be careful not to over tighten the vise and permanently bend the part. Then, using a standard half inch wrench, carefully remove the stud. You may need to exert a little force to break it loose initially, but after that, it should thread out relatively easily. Before installing the new stud, lube the threads to keep them from wearing or seizing up. This will also help protect them from corrosion. I like to use Permatex Anti-Seize for this. It's inexpensive, works well, and can be found at any half-decent hardware store. I've used this excellent product in many different projects, especially when dealing with threads and softer materials like aluminum or stainless steel. Carefully thread the new stud into the receiver, making sure not to cross-thread it. Then use a wrench to screw it in and tighten it. The stud should go in with minimal resistance. Don't force it in if it feels like it's catching. This is a standard UNEF 28 pitch, and careless treatment can easily damage the extra fine threads. Remember, the threads in the receiver itself cannot be replaced, so take care of them. After cleaning off any excess anti-seize, reinstall the stock with a new bolt, checking everything for proper fit and secure attachment. Then, reassemble the rest of the gun. Using a little anti-seize on the stud's internal threads will help extend the life of the part, but don't overdo it. Excess paste can go through the stud and get into the gun's action. It won't really damage anything, but it'll be messy to clean out. Well, I have the gun back together now. I'll make sure it's empty. Then give it a function test with a snap cap. Looks good. Still, before I hand this off to anyone else, I'll take it out and put some rounds through it, making sure the stock doesn't have any play under recoil. Afterward, I'll take the stock off and look for any signs of abnormal wear or parts coming loose. Now, the old stud and bolt will still work with the stock if they're all used together, so I'll be hanging on to them just in case. Well, that about wraps it up. You may have noticed that this video is more focused on repair work than the previous one. This wasn't actually in my list of planned topics, but I was repairing this shotgun anyway, so I figured I'd take some footage of the process and cut it together later on with the voiceover. Since this video is more involved than many other topics I plan on addressing, please use common sense when trying this yourself. Remember, a shotgun is a device that uses explosives to launch masses of dense metal at supersonic velocities. So if you're unsure about or uncomfortable with anything you see here, please get assistance or just let a qualified gunsmith do the work for you. If you'd like to see more repair procedures like this one in future videos, or if there's another topic you'd like to see covered, please feel free to leave a comment. I'd also welcome constructive input on the format of these videos. Things you liked, things you didn't like, things you'd like to see done differently, etc. So until next time, please stay safe and remember to represent the shooting community in a positive light.